Good afternoon, uh, Jarosław Kamiński, Rhythm Partner. We are very pleased to welcome you on our webinar regarding the privacy issues, especially data protection and uh, security information uh, connected with new technologies. Uh, together with me is uh, my really uh, good friend and colleague, Adam Woods. Hi, Adam. Uh, hi, good afternoon. Yeah, great to great to see the, such a big and nice audience today. Yeah, we, we we hope so that you have no any problems from a technical perspective regarding the login and and so we are in, in a good listening mode and you can see also us. So if there's gonna be any problems, please uh, type in on, in the chat uh, sector of our uh, panel. Mm. We hope that we are in good, uh, uh, good technical conditions that you don't gonna have any problems. If so, please, please contact us as, as soon as possible. Uh, today's webinar, uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning, is connected with the uh, data protection and security information. Together with Adam, we are we are handling this and dealing with the privacy matters since uh, uh, more than more than few years. Uh, we are uh, also uh, ISO standard 2700 uh, M21 regarding the security information. Uh, and we are dealing with uh, the data protection uh, and data issues uh, mostly since a uh, since, since, um, really long time. Uh, why we are doing this regarding legal and technical, Adam? Uh, uh, because it's very important. We say. Uh, let, let add to to, to what Yarek said. Just this, yes. uh, we are dealing like like a really really few years. I mean few, but during those few years, we did like most uh, above 100 audits, maybe even more, and uh, and that that was really joining together the forces of the legal part and the technical part. So Yarek is responsible responsible for the legal part today and during our, our work. And I'm also responsible for the technical part. So I'm dealing with the, the, the down level uh, hands on computer IT security. Uh, and why it's, why it's important? Yeah, because we have, we have noticed uh, that some time ago, uh, just before the uh, GDPR was implemented in Poland, uh, we, we were treated as, uh, as a revolution, and then we will talk about it pretty soon. Uh, that that it will be kind of evolution revolution in in um, um, in a way that is uh, information security will be treated, and it was the it was the opening of the gate for the real real technical knowledge which will be indeed needed for provide a good level of technical security because uh, you know sometimes ago it was just the papers which which were mentioned which were which were playing the main role for uh, providing the security to the third parties to the to the governments or whatever uh, now it is it is changed a little bit i mean maybe not a little bit maybe drastically I would say from my perspective it's changed that really uh, your technical knowledge should be involved because it's not exactly what's what you have in a paper but you have to prove that what is written in a paper in your documentation in your in your policies uh, is indeed working as designed and working properly and working good so that's 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 our approach yeah so this approach is connecting the technical and legal issues, as Adam mentioned, and this webinar is, uh, is, is, is dedicated due to our 30 year anniversary and 30 years of Rhythm Partner here in Poland. Uh, that is why during this 30 years we would like to mention uh, how it was before the privacy uh, uh, was more important in a private sector, in a public sector, in our lives as well. Uh, before uh, before 2018, when GDPR changed and uh, made the evolution and the revolution itself in, in some kind of aspects. And so the 30 years in Poland, uh, this uh, set of webinars that you, 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 you may follow with us uh, is, is, is dedicated just to show you how the market is changing, how the Poland is changing and how we as a real partner is changing as well. 
just to follow uh, follow our clients, follow the challenges that the world is giving us every day. And uh, that is why uh, we hope that you you're gonna spend the next one hour in a really uh, really good good mood. And as I mentioned, we would like to to have a view on the privacy on a very high level, on, on the level of uh, uh, what is the influence and where the changes, and also from, from the compliance perspective, uh, how uh, it influences on our lives and how it influences on our businesses. So uh, we hope that uh, you're going to enjoy it. And in case of any questions, please use the chat mode on our panel. Uh, we would like to... Uh, you're very welcome to, to present your questions. We, we're going to have uh, 10 minutes at the end, 10, 15 minutes maybe, at the end of our webinar and our discussion with Adam. Um, and we're really, really, really happy just to looking forward for your questions in this respect. So um, as an agenda, so uh, first of all, we would like to have an overview. How was it before? Uh, general data protection regulations uh, came into force in 2018. Uh, why and how it's changed totally the market and the perspective uh, of privacy in our lives and in, in our businesses. Uh, what is the role of uh, business continuity in management, especially uh, in a pre-COVID and post-COVID uh, uh, environment, uh, how it influenced and how it hit us uh, during the, the pandemic, and also how we how we can treat the privacy during the current situation since February 2022 uh, due to the war in Ukraine. Uh, how it also impact us as a society, as a, as a, as, a, as, a, as a businesses from the privacy perspective. Um, Adam will mention also the, the cyber risks and the cybersecurity itself, how it changes from the uh, uh, from the line of the of the time perspective and what's going to be next. How we see as a, as an expert, how we see the the future maybe uh, in the privacy. Uh, what's going to be really important in the daily life and in, in the private sector and the public sector. Uh, how it's going to influence our businesses. So uh, at the end, as I mentioned, Q and A, and if you're gonna have any questions during our webinar, please uh, uh, please post it and publish it in the chat section. Adam, any some uh, comments before we started? No, I mean you, you did it perfectly well. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, I think this picture shows us uh, how it's uh, how it was before GDPR. Uh, uh, gets more popular before 2018. Um, no sanctions, no really much regulations regarding the data data privacy. Uh, there was some laws in uh, each EU country. There was some laws in, uh, in, uh, worldwide, but uh, especially in EU, uh, where a lot of data are processing and a lot of e-commerce and uh, uh, and businesses uh, on a startup level, on a data flow between countries, uh, is uh, regularly um, exchange. Uh, it 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 wasn't uh, so harmonized, and it wasn't uh, in a really good manner protected, and the rights of the uh, data subjects of the persons uh, whose data was. Uh, uh, was used by the companies, by the public sector. Uh, it wasn't so regulated and it wasn't so protected uh, where I as an individual would have a right to, to say, okay, I want to have a really clear information uh, how my data are processed by you uh, as a company, by you as a private uh, entity, by you as a public, uh, uh, public authority. Uh, it wasn't so clear, uh, although some regulations were in place. However, there was no any sanctions. There was no any compliance departments where data matters, privacy matters were was so important, or with which a high risk could be treated in this respect. 
that is why um, European Commission uh, seeing that uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and all other major companies like Apple, like Samsung, like Huawei is using our data and based on the data that they have which we are giving to them using their um, applications, systems, products, uh, using their services, uh, we are giving them a lot of a lot of data, a really huge piece of our privacy. Decided to change this attitude and to harmonize the market itself, to give us the rights as an individuals, but also to force the companies, to force also public sector, to to say um, to to me as an individual, hey, you should communicate. You should give some information about uh, uh, about the data and the privacy methods that you are using to protect, to process the data uh, that you are you are having in your databases. And from this very beginning, it was only thinking about how we can protect uh, the individuals and how we can communicate with the individuals just to have a full information. Um, through this uh, uh, period of time, GDPR was uh, uh, performed and uh, implemented and uh, the drafting of each version was taking more than four years. And in 2016, uh, European Commission together with, uh, with uh, Parliament and uh, member states decided to, to, to adopt these new regulations and it's changed and, and gives the companies, gives the sector, the public and private one, gives it time and more than two years to implement the uh, the obligations that follow from the GDPR itself uh, to implement and to duly prepare itself to to to, to have GDPR to, and to be GDPR compliant. And from from from, from this really historical uh, point of view. Uh, the moment when uh, the companies and public sector is obliged to, to implement and to, to perform and to follow the rules from the GDPR itself, it's changed a lot. Why? It's uh, in a minute we, we, we're going to say about it. But before GDPR, as I mentioned, it, was, it wasn't really a really clear picture uh, how we need to uh, how we need to process and how we need to communicate with individuals. On the other hand, really small piece of regulations uh, gives us a really big um, gap and really uh, a portion of interpretation how the data can be processed, how they can be stored uh, in the companies or, or even uh, doesn't really matter about it because, as I mentioned, no sanctions, no any real uh, influence on the performance of the uh, of, 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 of the regulations which were in place before 2018. It gives a really small uh, portion, small margin to, to react from the data security authorities in each country in, in Poland as well, uh, and this pre-GDPR era is quite uh, is quite uh, is quite really limited to to maybe small portion of obligations, but still there were some, uh, but but really narrow uh, um, obligations regarding the the potential risk on the business if you are not compliant with the with the with the regulations before 20, 2880. Um, Adam, from your perspective, from your technical perspective, before GDPR, how it looks like? Well, it was uh, dark times, I would say. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe everyone from us remembers, what was the sign mark of this, of this previous Data Privacy Act from 1997? Do you remember? To me, it's, it was just a, one iconic thing. I mean, the length and complexity of a password. I mean, this was the only one declared technical parameter that should be kept in order to pr protect the data properly. And so you, so you probably remember the eight-length 
uh, eight characters length password with at least one big letter, small letter, and, and additional characters and the cipher and so on. Uh, and it should be changed on a 30 day basis, yeah, 30 days basis. And uh, it was a kind of nightmare. I mean, it was a probably properly it was it was um, something new when when they when they were creating the act in 1997, and it was working pretty good. But it was working like a, a one year, two years maybe since that time. And then then we have saw such a dynamic progress in um, in technical security. So it was it was a kind of uh, at the beginning of, of 21st century it was kind of nightmare. I mean everyone was laughing about that yeah you, your password should have eight, eight characters and should be changed regularly on, on the, uh, every 30 days. And from the security perspective it was wrong because you know we, we, what was the problem with this such um, problematic password uh, it was it was causing <laughs> um, it was opening other gates to, to security leaks because you know what was the people doing with, uh, with the complicated passwords they, of course they were noting it on the postcards making on the notes putting it behind a behind a monitor or under the keyboard so it was easy totally easy to to just to just to just find out where the password is or what the password is so it was, you know, something that is spoiling the data privacy, not protecting the, the data. So, so it was a kind of nightmare. So it, it was very good that, that, that this situation changed. And also from my perspective, as Jarek mentioned, um, before, before GDPR, nobody really, in Poland especially, nobody, I mean, no, no Polish companies were, were treating data privacy very, very serious, to be honest, yeah, because, when you when you got nothing, I mean, uh, you don't lose anything. You you don't have big risk because even if something happened that you can simply you know just calm it down and, and nobody will know about it, uh, or at least it is a really really huge information leak. Uh, but but you know there there was no pin penalties for that, so there was no regulations and. Uh, so it was kind of um, nobody were interested in, in in data protection at all from the technical point of view. It was very very hard to sell audits or pen tests. I mean, really, really only the external companies. I mean, external from Poland. I mean, the international companies which were uh, supposed to, to 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 be compliant with other regulations like uh, like a NIST or PCI DSS uh, or SOX maybe. Uh, they were interested in in really keeping the the the, the, the things uh, secure uh, so it was yeah so it was it was really dark times for for me and also the 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 guy the um, data protection officer abi in poland uh, you know it was also kind of um, only paper roll, to be honest. Yeah. So, so the guys existed, but it, it could be one. I mean, it, 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 the guy who is who was acting as a hobby uh, didn't need to to have a, any knowledge about the technical security at all. I mean, so now nowadays it's changed a little, um, and and we all we of course we will we'll, uh, we'll talk about this. Uh, yeah, just pretty soon. Uh, about the changes in the responsibility and approach. Uh, uh, I think from, from from before GDPR, what is what is really important. I, I can see you, you can also follow this, but um, we didn't have any clear information about the about the any data leakages or any data breaches. We didn't have a clear information what happened uh, if I if I uh, I don't know buy something in online online shop. What is happening with my data over there? If I uh, leave over there my credit card number or or my address or my personal number, etc. Um, uh, even the scope of the data and uh, uh, how much data I need to uh, leave in the in the e-shop or or, or anywhere else, no one really care how much uh, I will give it. Even though uh, maybe I don't know, ninety percent was not needed for the services I, I get in, in, in exchange for from the e-shop or from the authorities, uh, maybe private sector as well. Um, 
quite clear information if I if I uh, if I leave my I don't know uh, photos in in Facebook. What's going to happen with these photos? Uh, whether there are algor algorithm uh, in there, uh, maybe using the information what is happening over there, uh, and uh, maybe some additional commercial ads I will get. So really not 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 really clear picture and this uh this gives me um, quite thoughts that maybe uh on a certain level it was useful if uh, you don't know what is happening with your data but on the other hand uh, if you want to have a really clear information and uh, a clear picture why you're getting such kind of information on uh, for, for, for from the companies or for, for, from the uh, uh, for, for, from the users that are that are using your data, um, why is it coming from? That is why I, I think this is really, uh, as you said, uh, dark ages and uh, and it's really it's really not not really clear information on that. So I, I think this was this was one of the main reasons why it's changed and how it changed. Uh, it's uh, it's a matter of uh, I would say evolution through revolution from from some sectors from uh, especially from the perspective how we want to treat it, our privacy uh, because um, as you can see on the Brexit case or on the uh, EUS, EUS elections in uh, in 2016, 2016, uh, regarding the behavior of the uh, of the uh, individuals in the internet, in the Facebook, uh, uh, individuals on the uh, on Instagram, etc. So all the social media, uh, this kind of information was gathered by the uh, uh, by the systems. Uh, and this information was processed in a way that it shows a profile of me as an individual. And that kind of profile is saying something about me, about my attitudes, about my uh, uh, good or, or bad uh, behaviors, um, about my uh, preferences, what I would like to I know, eat, what I like to, uh, to do on my <clears throat> after work uh, time, uh, how I want to, to spend uh, time with my family on vacation, where, etc. So really a bunch of information which gives a really quite clear picture about me. And uh, this was really, really changed because of the GDPR. Uh, firstly, this new approach, and this new approach is based on the risk. We as a company, we as a firm, uh, we need to assess uh, what kind of methods and what kind of system we are using and for what we are gathering the data and what what is the risk if there's going to be something wrong in a system or it's going to be a human error or it's going to be a, a system error. What's going to happen if that data will flow and fly away to the internet, or to uh, someone will will find it in the I don't know in the in the in the trash, or someone will uh, will see this in a in a public transportation, some kind of uh, a piece of uh, paper documents, etc. So this new approach, based on the risk, somehow may be connected with the ISO standard as well where um, we need to assess our risk and to this risk we need to implement some kind of measures so for us as a businesses we need to think about it how we want to uh, protect our environment and how we want to assess this risk towards the sanctions and fines that comes together with the gdpr itself that is why the the the, um, the altitude and the uh, and the uh, approach how we want to handle this sector, how we want to uh, think about the privacy in this in this respect in 2018 changed a lot. And uh, for us, as we deal with the data and the security information, it was a game changer. Yeah? It was a it was a moment where we came up from the shadows uh, times 
and we we are on the level of really high risk of handling the processes connected with the data with the security information on one hand we have a organizational measures where we need to implement something some policies maybe some guidelines some clear information to our employees to our staff to our uh, suppliers contractors etc uh, on on the other hand we need to think also about the technical issues how how we are protecting where we are storing the data maybe the data uh, 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 get an access to them really to, to a companies where uh, we don't have any 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 contractual link or we are just paying them for for getting the services from their perspective but what they are doing with the data we don't know so this is uh, how we need to start thinking about it uh, and this is totally new and as Adam mentioned before that nobody cares about the, the privacy and maybe only on a high level of risk yeah. uh, but GDPR by implementing the fines and giving the sanctions also get an opportunity to the companies to reinvent uh, re in, in and rethink the uh, the, uh, the scope how I want to approach my data, what I'm going to do with them, where I want to store them, and how I want to uh, verify my subcontractors, my suppliers, and uh, my clients, and how I want to communicate with them, uh, especially on the consumer uh, on the consumer level. So um, this risk-based approach, and uh, uh, please remember that it's 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 really important. Uh, how I want to be compliant with the regulations and how this compliance influence on the risks that I potentially may have. So uh, I see it this uh, in, in this way. Uh, of course, with this uh, uh, with this new approach, uh, the accountability also came into force because I need to uh, say to everybody uh, the data of which I'm processing. Uh, who is the controller, uh, what kind of data I'm processing, for how long I want to process this data, uh, what kind of uh, recipients of my data I'm using, where the data are stored, for what period of time it's going to be stored over there, etc, uh, etc, etc. Et uh, and this gives a really clear information to the individuals and to the market, also from the uh, competition perspective, uh, to, to other companies, uh, what kind of uh, information I'm using, what kind of system I'm using, and that is why, uh, if more, if I'm more transparent to the market, on the on one hand, it's it's really good because I'm really compliant and I'm really uh, towards the individuals. I'm I'm quite open, and this is quite information, quite clear information to them. On the other hand, being transparent. It's a, some kind of influence on my competitivity uh, towards other other companies, but still, if I want to be compliant, I need to see and I need to uh, find a really good uh, level of uh, of really uh, uh, medium approach. Uh, on the one hand, individuals. On the other hand, my business, just to not 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 kill kill my business as well. If I'm gonna be too much too 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 restrictive, or or if I'm gonna be too much uh, too much too much wants to be too much compliant. So um, this is really a uh, really game changer. And uh, in terms of the I add, I add something. Something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would also say that uh, the implementing the GDPR was also very, very good booster for the whole company security. It's it's not regarding only PII data, so it's not only about the personal data. The personal data was just uh, you know the ignition, ignition, and but uh, in, after all, it it was just a very, very uh, it, it brought the very good results. To the whole a situation and whole level of security for the whole company so including the i don't know internal secrets 
or or I don't know the the words word important related uh, things. Uh, so so many many other things not only related to PI and not only um, I mean so because when you are implementing the risk based uh, technology risk based approach, then it's natural to just simply expand it also to other to other aspects of data yeah? because you know when, when something is implemented like ISO 2701 so yeah most of other data important data to companies also um, investigated first so that we know exactly where exactly is the value of our data so it's not only PII but sometimes yeah sometimes maybe even some more other data should be protected even more than PII. Let's say for the factories and uh, manufacturing industries, uh, and then then we can simply just easily expand this process, which is already brought to to, to protect the data, uh, PII data, to just simply expand it to to the uh, to the other branches, and it will be re really really good for the for the whole company, and it also will bring our company to the next level, upper level. So it will be. We will be dealing with the. Uh, it will be easier for us to deal with other bigger companies as the third parties, maybe to cooperate with them, showing that our processes are really in a good shape. And it's not only we're not talking about just I know the PII data, which is uh, because we might pay fines. We we are showing that we are taking care of really really about the the whole business. So it was it was really a good booster. And, and we uh, we are still observing that, and which, which is very 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 good. Mm -hmm. And uh, two maybe additional issues connected with that: uh, the influence of the GDPR is not only in the EU and EU member state, because all the companies uh, worldwide, uh, if they want to have a business in EU, they need to follow also the rules from w which are implemented in the GDPR itself. So. Uh, the scope of uh, uh, usability of the GDPR is is quite broader. That's uh, that that's, uh, maybe uh, uh, other uh, may, may may seem uh, as a only uh, European regulation. No, it's 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 a it's a regulation which influences also all other private sectors, all other public sectors. Uh, uh, around the world. That is why this GDPR is so important in case of uh, uh, other services which are uh, provided from US, from China, from Asia, etc. So it's really important that uh, that kind of companies also be compliant with GDPR requirements. So this is maybe one, one, one important issue which trigger also and uh, it's totally game changer. And the other one is privacy by design, privacy by, privacy by default rule, which means that all new services, all new products connected with uh, personal data, connected with data, connected with the maybe metadata, which are also in the system, in the application, etc. But using the behavior of maybe some population, etc. Also needs to be rethink and analyzed in terms of GDPR, in terms of the requirements which follow from the GDPR. Um, so, for example, whistleblowing. Yeah, we are we are in the in a moment where it's going to be an obligation for for a bunch of uh, companies which needs to implement the whistleblowing requirements. Uh, from the privacy by design by default uh, uh, perspective. The, the companies need to rethink what kind of data will be in the system, uh, what kind of system will you be using, and if that system is uh, safe enough to, to, to store and to process the data. That is why the influence on the basic ongoing business uh, of the GDPR is really, is really important. And I, I think we should we should treat this as a process. Yeah, this is influent process of uh, of, of uh, storing and processing the data, which is uh, which is like a river. It's 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 flowing all the time. So this is maybe the, the issues that we, we we have. And from the from, from the GDPR, and also a challenge that uh, that may be faced to the companies is the business continuity management. And from one hand, as, as we mentioned, there are organizational measures, 
uh, procedures, standards, guidelines, group guidelines, uh, uh, and we have a technical one uh, about uh, which I think Adam will, will, will talk about a minute. Uh, from the organizational perspective, we need to also think where are our suppliers, where are our mother companies are, what our headquarters are, uh, and what is the transfer of the data, of our internal data, of our external, of our client's data. Um, for example, uh, before uh, the, 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 the verdict of the European Court since 20, 2021 about the uh, exchange of the data between US and EU, uh, there was a privacy shield background uh, which regulated there uh, that uh, if on the list of the uh, provided by the US government, if a company is on the privacy shield list, uh, it means that that, that that company is securing and giving uh, a confirmation that my data in US are duly protected. European court said that uh, even though the US uh, state uh, and uh, uh, United States of America are not safe enough country to protect and to store the data of individuals, especially from the European Union, because the uh, possibility by the US government, by the US authorities to see what kind of data and what systems are stored and uh, are using for example, by Facebook, for example, by YouTube, uh, Apple, and other other uh, companies, even smaller one, uh, even the companies uh, who are uh, providing you the uh, the systems, uh, for example, Cisco, uh, and other other big companies, um, in a, in a, in a technical perspective, the U.S. government may demand based on the U.S. provisions just to get an information from that systems and that is why uh, the uh, e, the european court said that us is not safe enough and this also trigger us as a as a company just to rethink okay so what's gonna be now uh, if i can use it the company uh, the the companies from the us or not uh, what what should i implement in this respect that is why um, we as a company need still faces this new uh, approaches and new regulations and new interpretation of the GDPR that from the organizational perspective may influence in our business itself. And since uh, as, as we are uh, really partners, we are a global company, we also face this because um, we have clients worldwide, but we have also our subsidiaries worldwide. And the exchange of the data is quite huge. That is why we still need to think about it, how we can, from the organizational perspective, we can protect and give the good level of comfort of our clients, of our uh, individuals in a, on the client side, that we are really good protecting the, the data. That is why this is still a continuing management, continuing uh, business, how we, can, how, we, how, how we need to handle with the data. Technical, Adam. What you, how you see it? Yeah, let's go, let's go through it quickly. Um, the most important thing is that you really need to take care of the data right now. So starting from a technical mm -hmm. measures, it's in it's only IT related. It's also regarding we are starting from physical security. So you have to physically protect your data the storage of the data, the transfer of your data, the movement of the data, if it's, if it's, if it's taken by, by you know, your employees from the place to place, maybe. So you have to think over uh, and you have to provide uh, the good measures to, 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 to find out if, if, this, if this way, this approach is, is secure enough. Uh, and you have to implement and show the effectiveness of the, um, of the uh, sources or resources or, or, or uh, solutions that you used. Um, so you have to provide that, uh, you have to prove that they are in fact, uh, in fact effective, so it works. It's, so it's, it's really, really game changer. It's something which, which didn't happen even before regarding, I don't know, ISO 2701 even. 
Um, because uh, yeah, in every good standard, you always take care about the confi uh, confi uh, confidentiality, confidential uh, availability and integrity of the data. Uh, but now you have to also prove the, the effectiveness, and this is this is really really the big game changer. And also, this uh, policy uh, uh, privacy by design and by default is also a big changer from our perspective. Uh, at, uh, mostly, we are observing that uh, during the development phase of the applications, so the applications that will, will be used for 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 you know, gathering and serving the data, the, the PII data. So it was also something which didn't happen before. Now, now we see a, a good good progress because uh, in order to prove that the application that you are buying let's say that you are buying a very good reputable, repu, um, reputable application so you have to prove that you implemented it according to the to the to the good procedures uh, and you have to prove that it's indeed wor working as as design yeah because you know, we can simply um, imagine the situation when you bought let's say the antivirus software and you just install it yeah so from the paper point of view you have you have done the, the, done the right thing, you have installed the antivirus software, but the antivirus software is not updated. Or maybe it's just, you know, the, all, all important files uh, are excluded because you configured in the, in the wrong way. Uh, I will return to it uh, later on when I will be talking about the, 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 the data breaches um, right now, because, yeah, it's, it's, still, it's still very important. Uh, yeah, so, so the security, uh, security came into force and just uh, ch changed also a lot, yeah. Because as you mentioned, you need to have a proof, yeah, that your system is quite yeah. secure. And 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 from the so 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 let's say if we buy the the, the well known stuff and implemented it, then we we have to prove that it's working. And if we are writing our own stuff here, because yeah, sometimes happen, of course. Uh, then we have to prove that also we are we are keeping a good level of of, of uh, protecting the data security data security. So so at least we need to, to do do some audits, some pen tests, and which is which which uh, which was never <laughs> which will never happen before. I mean nobody, as we told you uh, before, nobody will really take uh, good care of that because they don't simply they don't need it. Yeah. So yeah. From your perspective. Uh... GDPR was only the beginning, I guess, just of, of the requirements that, that technically you need to only uh, confirm that you, you have a confidentiality uh, or I, I, your your accessibility of the to, to the data itself, and you're you're saying only this by, by your system, but you need to prove as well. Yeah, you, you do the pen yeah, testing, exactly. the, the, the 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 application checks, etc. But it's also I think is also very first step uh, just to implement other requirements for example network information security directive yeah the, that, uh, the, for big companies and from the from the public sector from the security of the state perspective it's quite important yeah so the the big companies which are I know responsible for energy for for supply of the uh, of the uh, military sector etc. They are obliged to implement additional additional uh, additional requirements. For example, reporting of any data breaches, uh, high level of, uh, of of security of of the network, and also the monitoring of the network itself. Yeah. So so I guess this is. This is the requirements with, with, which also followed by the um, by the GDPR and also are, are still developed by other by other uh, requirements. And I think this was also also game changer yeah, from this perspective because yes, we yes. as individuals and, are are more protected maybe in some way. Yeah, yeah exactly. And th this is also very important what you mentioned that that every company needs to need to find out if something happened and react accordingly mm -hmm. of course which is you know it also didn't happen in the past and what is also very important to me that this NIST directive is leaving i mean so they implemented the NIST directive like i don't know two years ago maybe i am wrong uh, but 
Yeah, but, but then it was the uh, NIST two implemented because they noticed that you know the first uh, the first situation a little bit changed. Uh, we are we have some lessons learned from the implementation uh, within the European Union. So 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 they 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 simply improved that and and it's really going towards the the, the good way. So 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 yeah. yeah, GDPR was a booster, and then and NIS appeared and it's still living and. And moving towards the, to the to the really really good approach for the and, data security. And, and from your perspective, as a cyber risk, yeah, because we we are everybody is is working right now in the, in the internet and in in the uh, in the in the environment which is uh, which is based on the on the internet itself, the systems, applications, uh, emails, etc. And we are exchanging a lot of information, a lot of data. From your cyber risk perspective, how, how you see it, how uh, how the regulations change, and uh, what is the information to the market based on this? Well, uh, it's, it's, uh, we can we can see it from the from the two different sides. The, the one side is 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 our side, let's say auditors, assessors. Yeah. So 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 from our side, from perspective perspective, change a lot because. A lot of people are now, a lot of companies are right now uh, interested in, in really providing them a good mm -hmm. uh, level of uh, assessments and showing the real situation because really they take take a good care of the data privacy. So it's not mm -hmm. a, it's not the times when you know when you when they were asking us please provide us the documentation yeah that we should <laughs> in case of any control we are just show the documentation and we are mm -hmm. we are okay yeah. So now that the people, I mean, they understood the, the situation. They know the risk of attack is very big right now. Uh, so they know actually, but also that they are responsible, real, real responsible for the data protection. So they want us to check thoroughly the the the, the, the systems. I mean, even even down low level um, checks, uh, pen testing on the system that we can provide them information that they really feel safe with the with the business they provide yeah because it's not only documentation it's really it's really hidden mm -hmm. behind mm -hmm. uh, so it's 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 that uh, from the other perspective the other way shows that the uh, amount of attacks is still growing so uh, so, so somebody may ask oh, come on so if if such a company is, i mean so many companies even everyone uh, every single one is is involved in, in increasing data protection. So why the breaches still occur and, and why they're so significant? Significant, uh, yeah, because you know it it, it has a, it has a both side. I mean, there, there's a other there's a other reasons as well. I mean, the COVID was was also one of the one of the game changers. It it all appeared just just one after other. Now we have the war in Ukraine, which also will be a kind of I know booster for other activities, unfortunately. So yeah, but and it's also and it's always like that that you have the both sides, the the good ones and the bad ones. And so even if the good ones are are doing good and best and even better then the bad ones are also trying to do it even better uh, so 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 the risk is still still existing and uh, some things like a uh, covid uh, says uh, i mean proved that uh, in 2019 it was uh, it was a, a very visible trend that there was a lot of breaches were basic on the human errors. I mean, it's it's not a, it's not a, it's not a related to social engineering, but just the human errors. Uh, so so the, let's say that systems were configured in a wrong way. Why? Because uh, in a, in a very very short time, uh, ninety nine percent of companies try to move its business from the local oriented. I mean, offices. Yeah. To the to the home offices for the all employees, and it was very very short time. Nobody were prepared for that, so it was a lot of errors, and those lot of errors caused a lot of breaches, and it is like a sixty percent probably basing on 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 last uh, last uh, report by Verizon. Uh, even sixty percent of the breaches from two thousand uh, two thousand nineteen uh, were caused by by the human errors. So, so it's it's not like you know this. So the the security is not not the, just a one state. Yeah, it's it's something that that is dynamically changing, and you and 
uh, also those those acts that that are now existing are supporting this. So you have to take care dynamically and prove that you are taking a care a good care of the data privacy uh, on a regular basis, not only you know just for one one step in time. Mm -hmm. uh, you you mentioned pandemic data breaches. I I totally agree with you. Uh, the pandemic maybe change uh, change the perspective uh, how we are really uh, prepare for unusual cases. Yeah, we as a companies and we also as a individuals. So the the home office uh, that you switch to the to the office uh, the physical office to your private office it, it also ch challenges. And I think this was the growth of the human errors. Yeah, we we are oh, not yeah. prepared. Uh, as you can see on this uh, on this slide, uh, a lot of new uh, challenges uh, for, for, from the security and from the uh, from the data uh, data security level occurs, which wasn't before, yeah, because uh, the, the the environment of our work totally changed. And, and this was. I mean, at least at least companies didn't care really about that because you know it's, it's, well, what what your, what your employee is doing at your home is it's, it's just his or her. I, I agree, and, and 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 again, uh, privacy by default by design, yeah, the principles came in the first, and organizational technical measures just rethink again about your about our privacy about our business secrets about our our data which we are which we are using so uh, and the sanctions yeah and then there's the second that you mentioned data breaches uh, i think this was quite important because on the other hand how i see it is that we get an information if because gdpr bring a requirement that i need to notify about the breach in my company uh, uh, in, in my public uh, public authority. I need to notify the market, I need to notify the users, the individuals, and I need to notify the supervisory authorities on a certain conditions, of course. But still, uh, each country has uh, their own sanctions and their own uh, approach how to, how to deal with the GDPR requirements and how the companies are, uh, are, are, are performing this. But as you can see, uh, all over the uh, EU, uh, the sanctions uh, came in, and uh, the amounts are quite quite important in this respect. So, it, it's 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 really also the uh, this was the reason, yeah, of the GDPR just to harmonize this and just to have a really influence on the on the protection of the data. Um, okay. Uh, and I, I would also say I would also say that it's still working very good because I don't know, like a good example. Like two or three days ago, we have information that Revolut um, has mm -hmm. a data breach, mm -hmm. like 50,000 yeah. 50, um, data, personal data were, were taken. Uh, and yeah, we know it just you know, one or two days later, and it's 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 it's, it's global information. So so we, yeah. we know that that's that, uh, you know the, your your money is not in danger, only some kind of. Just a six per person, yeah. I even know if one person maybe of, of the yeah. you know, of the whole population of Revolut user were, were attacked, and but we know it, we know it, and we know it pretty soon. So and it's very we good. know it. We know we also allowed to, to to get an information what kind of data are endangered, and what kind of measures I need to take as an individual just to change. I don't know, reset my password reset my passwords in other applications and systems maybe and yeah this is totally agree with you it's it's really it's really different different story than before uh okay um how we see the future mm, how, how you see the future how uh maybe some reports that you have uh, regarding the security how it's gonna be in the future because i, I see two, two two things in this respect it's um uh, invigilation or maybe um uh, my behavior in the internet and maybe outside of the internet that's gonna be it, it's gonna be really crucial and follow this it's gonna be data my data is a currency yeah so uh, by giving my data even for free uh, i get some uh, i get some services some products but uh, i will pay my I, I will be paying by my data yeah but but by my uh, by my but my um, behaviors, uh, how how I want to uh, uh, how I want to 
use the system for what reasons and uh, what is what is my profile in the internet maybe in the application itself and i'm giving this data for in exchange for uh for for some kind of services and products yeah, yeah i mean uh so so it, it's happening right now but of course it will be growing i believe uh, and you probably may notice on yourself that uh, let's say but because it's not only how you're using the i don't know the applications the web applications or using the browser using the cookies yeah it's, it's part of very important thing but it's also how you behave where you go how much mm -hmm. time you spend in some particular places i mean it's it is possible that also every one of you have noticed that if you got just go to the you know the, the the shopping mall and you're staying for a longer time let's say in one location then it's possible that like an hour later you will re receive the and uh, uh, advertisement for the particular name of the of the shopping mm -hmm. which might be uh, kind of interesting and uh, also uh, if you are talking about something yeah, about let's say let's buy i don't know the photo camera uh, and it is possible that sometime later you will receive the information that uh, oh, come on why don't you buy this camera um it's it happens it really happens and you know it's it's uh, as as long as it's good for us because yeah, to be honest, it's good for us, yeah, because yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's serving us the, the, the good advertisement that we really want is better than serving the advertisement that we really didn't take care of. So, 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 so it's, it's, it's working good, but uh, yeah, we have to think over what, what will be next, what will be the next level, and if, 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 uh, because. Uh, uh, you may ask uh, yourself, how is it that I'm talking about something and and I'm also Google or uh, Facebook or some some so, some other company, my my hearing that and and basing on that will, will serve me some some advertisement. Uh, it it's, gives it's you easy. gives you an advice on it, yeah. <laughs> maybe 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 <laughs> maybe give you a discount something. I don't know. It's 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 all depends, yeah. But how it happens, you know, because you are using Google Assistant probably or any other voice assistant, mm -hmm. and in order to do this kind of assistance, in order to just get rid of those magic words, you know, okay, and then the name of the company or whatever, uh, they need to to hear all, all the time what's happening around, yeah? Because in other way, they would simply didn't recognize that this okay mm -hmm. magic word, yeah? So it it is like something like that, that you know, yeah, you are still um, being, you know, traced. And and all, all all what that you see and all that you do, it will be traced and it will be. So the only problem in the future might be how it how it will be used. Is will, mm -hmm. will it be good for you or bad for you? But it's it's no other way. I mean, <laughs> you can avoid it. So, so it's, yeah. it's simply like that. And also, so the good regulations will help to 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 to, yeah. to just yeah. deal with that to, in to, a good totally, way. To, totally agree with you. I think the next level will be. Um, regulations which will also follow the market trends yeah and this is uh, I agree with you that this is uh, uh, that we, we cannot avoid this situation uh, but still I would like to have a full information about it and for what reasons and for for how long it's gonna be uh, taken so um, from the fr from this perspective I, I, I see it that Mm, cookie privacy will be will, will be still in, on, on the paper for the next uh, few years, and also the uh, I think the discussion about the, the data as a currency as well because uh, uh, how how we want to protect my rights as a, a for, to to my data uh, on one hand on the other hand I want to use this data for certain reasons for certain aspects maybe i want to get something for free because this is needed for for me as an individual maybe for for my work etc so uh, there is a lot of questions i think in the future that uh, that we're gonna see in this two perspectives and uh, and i think the regulations needs to needs to also follow fo follow this uh, but still gdpr will be in place and gdpr will be interpreted in this way so i, I think uh, the good background that we have, uh, but the future will will show us uh, uh, how, how deep it's going to be uh, by using our data. Whether they will be using, it's quite clear they will be using. It's a matter of uh, for how long and uh, for what reasons, I, I guess. Uh, 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, I guess I don't know if you have something to, to, to mention about it, just to, just to summarize. We don't have any questions, so I guess we, we were quite clear on that. I uh, hope so. Uh, and uh, I don't know if please, you want please, to say please, something. Please feel, free, please feel free to, to, to write something if you have any answer, any questions to ask, please, please do. Yeah, we, we, we're, we're always open on, on any questions. Maybe something was unclear. Uh, we don't have a magical uh, 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 tools that that to say how the privacy will be developing, but definitely <laughs> it's going to be a key role in in our in our lives in our business uh, environment, and also for us as a real partner as well by using the clients' data, using the uh, the information about uh, about the business secrets and advising the clients how to duly protect itself. Um, definitely is a, is a crucial crucial point in the future and in the end we really invite you to our next uh, big webinar it's going to be a third edition of our whistleblowing summit uh, we will really invite you uh, on 8 december 2022 for the participants is really free of charge and uh, a really bunch of information and uh, the knowledge that that you can share on the uh, case level perspective as well Adam, thank you very much. Um, thank you uh, very much. Uh, thank you for the for for the audience. Uh, we wish you a good uh, rest of the day, and stay tuned with us in the future. Thanks and bye.